we, we are very pleased to be able to speak with Rahul Bhagat, the country head of retail liabilities, marketing, and direct banking channels at HDFC, one of the best retail banks in India. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Um, well, thank you for having me. You are at the forefront of the explosion in retail banking in India. Um, in terms of that great move of um, moving the Indian customer from traditional bank branches, and in some cases, uh, unbanked customers, uh, onto uh, the channels that you prefer them to move, uh, what have you been learning about the Indian customer? Well, we personally believe that um, the, Indian, the Indian consumer is very, very open to technology and to be able to adopt that as per his convenience. In my view, as long as you offer the customer choice and convenience, the customer will make the choice based on his or her convenience. If you look at HDFC Bank today, about 80% of customer-initiated transactions are done through alternate channels, that is the ATM phone, net or mobile. Uh, when I say customer-originated transactions, I'm not including, like some other banks do, text alerts, because text alerts are what is going out from the bank. I'm talking about customer-initiated transactions. So uh, that's, that's very promising. Only 20% of our transactions are cash at branches or other transactions or clearing or check deposits or we're clearing as the case may be. So that gives you an idea as to uh, the preponderance of usage amongst the direct channels that we have at the bank. Um, this is not to say, if I, okay, if I was to segment this further, it's not this is an urban-centric phenomenon. Obviously, it would, it would vary from amongst different types of customers. If you segment your customer base or you segment your distribution base, it would vary. But across 88, uh, we have 1,700 plus branches across 88 centers, so which is cities and towns in India. And this 80 plus percent of our total transactions happening through direct banking channels is the average across the entire distribution that we have. So it gives you an extent of how readily it has been adopted and accepted by the consumer. Obviously the bank has introduced this technology at different points of time. We've explained this technology and the benefits of it and we've handheld the customers and actually uh, using it for the first time. And we find that once we've been able to handhold them they decide, customers can decide for themselves what is convenient for them. And we offer them the choice and, and they decide on the, based on their convenience what choice they want to use. Um, in terms of the customer base in a country as large as India with, with more than a billion people, uh, you have critical mass of customers who are very technology savvy, who can support theoretically uh, the setting up of a direct banking only bank, for example. Uh, and another critical mass of customers was so um, branch, um, you know, centric that uh, branch banking will probably be, you know, continuously important. In Absolutely, India. very important. It remains. It remains. Branch banking remains the hub of everything that we offer to the consumer. Um, we we say that the branch owns the consumer. The consumer may decide to be transacting where and when he wants. But it is not to say if uh, we have, at no point of time have we ever said or do we believe that the branch is not important in our scheme of things. The branch is terribly important in our scheme of things. And as far as we're concerned, the branch is the person who owns is, the consumer. Is there a temptation to make HDFC so internet savvy that the brand and the association of HDFC is more in the direct space rather than in the branch? Not space? at all. Not at all. Not at all. The branch is an integral part of our channel strategy. We put our various channels, whether it is ATM or phone banking for that matter, around the branch to impact, to enhance the catchment area of the branch and to also be a convenience as far as the consumer is concerned. But at no point of time are we substituting the branch with any of these other direct channels. These complement our branch expansion strategy. Uh Tell us a little bit about uh, what you're learning about the customer in terms of from the transactions that are coming through and the profile of the customers that, that deal with you on the channels that you are responsible for. Uh, we, believe, uh, we believe that money is well spent on below the line activities. So we have thousands and thousands of campaigns going on at any given point of time monthly, whether it is uh, uh, to various consumers of us, that is our in-house customers. Uh, after having 
statistically, uh, well, let's say that we build models, we build models based on the data that we have to determine what the probability and propensity of the customer's need and purchase is likely to be. Based on that data and as, as per statistical modeling of it, we then reach out to these consumers and either uh, 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 and, and explain the benefits of these products uh, because we believe that that is the right time for the customers to be availing of these products and services. What we started originally doing was we used to reach out to them through either through SMS campaigns, email campaigns, as well as telemarketing campaigns as in outbound calling from our various centers. Over a period of time, uh, with the expertise as well as the critical mass that we have in um, uh, through our analytical marketing uh, infrastructure, we have started targeting customers through both the ATM and net banking channels. So that is that uh, when a customer comes to the ATM, if there is a particular offer that is tailor-made specifically for a particular customer, we have the ability and we do actually send a message to the customer saying that Mr. So-and-so you are eligible for XYZ product at ABC price or at a differential offer as the case may be, would you be interested and the customer has the option to say yes or no. Depending on the, the product or offer that we're pushing out, some offers we're able to close through a straight through process that is online itself and if the customer was to say yes, he just presses yes and automatically that gets done. For example, someone wants to upgrade a debit card or a credit card from a regular saving, from a regular debit card to a gold debit card or from a gold debit card to a platinum debit card. He doesn't require to send any forms. These these are all these are all available for him to click a button and then it is mailed to his residence as per his request. On the other hand, so there may be some products that do require documentation, that do require a personal visit uh, to facilitate the whole process. In which case we uh, generate the lead through either net banking or ATM as the case may be and it is followed up within 24 hours at the very outside by a visit to the customer at a place of his or her convenience and we then uh, conclude the deal across the table then. Yeah. So, so for all these tactical initiatives that you have in place, what are the big numbers that you look at um, in terms of um, wins, in terms of market share, in terms of customer profitability? Um, and maybe even um, customer cross-selling ratios, for example. Um, which of these are important to you and what are your numbers? All, all of them are important. All of them are important. But uh, we do... So have you been gaining market share in specific products? We have. It is, uh, as far as our strategy is concerned, HDFC strategy has always been to be a market leader in any of the products or verticals that HDFC Bank operates in. By market leader, we define ourselves as being in the top two or three, and we strive to be that. Having said that, market leadership for us is has to come at the cost uh, 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 with a profit uh, profitable enterprise. It's we're not going to sacrifice profitability for the sake of market share per se. So it has to be profitable business growth for all of us. After the after the acquisition of the Centurion Bank franchise, um, what had to happen for? Uh, HDFC to fully absorb that and make sense of the customer base that you had? Uh, well, the important thing is, as soon as the um, uh, merger with the Century Bank happened was to integrate the two banks. So uh, what we did was it had to be integrated under one technology for the branches to uh, not only integration of both technology as well as processes as well as products for it to be one bank. There was also the whole, the, the, the whole um, challenge of integrating uh, people bringing practices uh, onto a common platform and in a very short period of time getting to a point where we weren't talking about the erstwhile HDFC bank or the erstwhile Centurion Bank of Punjab, it was HDFC bank. So to integrate integrate both uh, the two sets of the customer bases, integrate the branches, integrate the people, integrate the technology, that was what we embarked upon and having done that it's it's a milestone that is in our past right now. We are one bank, we are HDFC Bank, and we're forging ahead. Thank you very much, Rahul, for spending time with us. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me.